Playing a new deck today. Uh, went from Emir Spies, wasn't really feeling it. Now I'm trying out the the discard deck that's on Gwendolyn. And uh, did I say discard? I should have said discard. Discard Skellige with King Bran. It's a little bit uh, of a modified version of the previous discard Skellige, but some of the more co uh, core concepts like Restore is uh, still you know, a pretty major win condition in this game, as well as using Torgrey, Gremist, and Sigdrifa, those three under three <laughs> strength uh, silver cards. It's pretty strong. I'm liking it. So I'm playing up against Spellatel here. It's a pretty difficult deck to go up against uh, in general. But especially if you don't really know some of the particular nuances of this matchup. Or not particular matchup, but matchup against Spellatel in mind. Uh, so I'll just speed this up a little bit so we can get to the more interesting stuff. Uh, one new card that this, this, uh, that this deck got, which I think is really, really interesting. I kind of thought I undervalued it. When I first saw it, but it's actually pretty incredible. It's act so it's called Wolfsbane over here. When it goes to your graveyard, so after you discard it, after three turns at the start of your turn, you boost the lowest ally by six. Sorry, excuse me. And you damage the highest enemy by six. Now that's pretty incredible because it's as if you're playing a 12 strength unit from dis your discard brand, from your leader ability. It does take three turns, but most people are not going to give up round uh, round one so easily. So it's just it's it's so much power so quickly. It's this like incredible, high, incredibly high tempo advantage that you get um, at such a like effortless pace. It's pretty incredible. And I don't believe there's really any way to play against it except to do something like this, like play a Quinsign or to make sure your opponent has no units on the field, which is pretty difficult to do. You just got to make sure to, you know, not be outplayed so easily effectively essentially rather so it's gonna that's gonna take uh in two turns I th i'm pretty sure i've gotten a couple people um i i guess the only word that comes to mind is debated i debated a couple people with that card uh which has won me some games which is pretty interesting but i've also been uh annihilated by it because they'll pass they'll like play they'll play in such a way that so when I do get that 12 points, I'm either still under it and I'm going first and that kind of ruins my game plan or like I way overplay and then they just pass on me or something like that. It can be really tricky. If you're not like prepared to deal with it. This would be a super fantastic Igni punish, but no, uh, I don't feel like, like anybody's running Igni these days, which is really weird. Like every now and then Igni will just come in vogue and it'll just like absolutely annihilate certain deck archetypes but oh wait no you probably couldn't even play igni on that because it needs to be 25 now forgot about that never mind <laughs> and then it used to be back in my day that's not how it was there it is so i uh, one thing i wanted to make sure to do was damage his his farseer so i did actually get that six damage off and it didn't just get blocked because if you're just buffing your own by six that's okay but it's definitely not great I'm going to use Coral to kill the other one. I'm just trying to uh, like take the cogs out of his machine, out of his his tempo engine. I was kind of hoping I'd be able to play Door Gray to kill this off, but he actually manages to still buff you in his hand. Also, I really like this new Ivoreth. I Ivoreth? Yeah, I like the new Ivoreth. Really cool. I especially want a gold version of this card. And I think it has like the, the single best like golden animation in the game. Too bad he doesn't have it, but it's really good. So going forward from this point, I don't really need to do all that much. I just need to play out my cards. Uh, again, like this is a really keen example of breaking up your hand. Uh, I'm not going to play Restore. It's a win, uh, late game win condition. Uh, I'm not going to play the Priestess of Freya because there's not really anything in the graveyard yet. Uh, playing my healer dude, our, I think he's called Armorsmith. That's a pretty good plan. I heal up my Morkvarg, and I heal my Whale Harpooner. Whale Harpooner's not too bad of an option. I can pull this guy into the back row, and I don't want to use Sigdrifa, so that leaves Door Gray as well, but I can probably... I don't... It's not particularly pressing to use Door Gray just yet, so it leaves with two options, the Armorsmith and the Whale Harpooner. I believe I just go ahead and pick um, Armorsmith, but either of those options is not bad. I'm trying to think if maybe one is objectively better than the other. I guess just waiting for him to pile more cards on that siege row is not a bad idea. But 
I don't think it makes too big of a difference. Although, uh, actually, what he does next makes me feel like it wasn't a good idea. He plays this card, and he plays this new card. I need to look at what it... No, he just played the Lightning Bolt. I guess I'm... Oh, pff, I'm trying to right-click his graveyard <laughs> in this VLC player. Um, uh, sometimes Spell Tower will use this card that deals, like, three damage on each row or something like that. And saving my armor smith for that would probably would have been better than just using the harpooner e earlier, but doesn't make too big of a difference. This is like the difference of like one to three points, which in round one isn't that big of a difference. I mean, if you're trying to maximize your play, of course, one is better than the other, and that would probably be oil harpooner. But otherwise, I'm not too worried about it. So he passes. Uh, I went second, and I passed him on strength. He just uh, like I said, I was able to shut down his uh, his siege engine, uh, his strength engine, and also I had this weather on the row, so every turn he was just hemorrhaging points. Yeah, and a big reason why I was able to do this is because I had that wolf spain that triggered and gave me twelve strength early. And I was just able to sail ahead of him, stop him from ever gaining any traction at all. So that's how you deal with that. If you have the the removal options available, you should absolutely go for them. It's so powerful. So going to this round, I believe my best option probably would be to drive pass here. I forget exactly what I do. Or you could just uh, thin out your deck by using the warmongers and then try and get him down to the point where he plays his Farseer out and then I just pass. That's probably the better option. I think to wait until he plays out his third Farseer and then pass by that point. Although if I was him, I would not try and play it immediately. He's going to play at the rally. Okay. There's the Farseer. So he's going to play it out immediately anyway, which is uh, relatively expected. So I could just totally go for the pass here, but I'm going to continue to thin out my deck. Although that would have been a good pass opportunity because I was ahead of him on strength. So he would have had to play at least one more card to win the round. Play up my oh that's right I want to make sure to get use out of this um, this card that I have uh, something hey may maiden or whatever it is because if I I, can, I don't believe I can really get much use out of hey may maiden <laughs> I'm hoping I'm saying that right into the third round so I want to make sure to use it while I still have a warmonger to be played and also a skirmisher to be discarded and at the same time I wasn't accounting for this but still nice is I got my uh, queen Saris or whatever her name is queen I don't know. Is it Saris? I'm pretty sure it's Saris, right? I get mixed up with all of the C names on the gold cards in this game. And one last thing I could do is use my Dora Gray to go for a a cheeky Ekimara. Although that's because that's a pretty low tempo play. It's only eight points in strength. It may not be the best option because reducing the temp reducing the um Reducing the, I guess, just tempo, I guess it's the easiest way to say it. Reducing your tempo allows your opponent to better catch up with you. So by this point, I'm just going for my second uh, win condition, which is to get my cards down to one or two cards with uh, like a Priestess of Freya and Restore. And then I use Restore to bring back uh, Gremist. And then I use that Blood Card Running World on the, on the Priestess, which is only one point lost for 11 points gained. And then you get whatever you got from Priestess of Freya, which is, you know, going to be on average like eight to nine, nine points. It's a really strong two card combo. I just go ahead and go for the Sigrifa to get out another Ekimara. I would not have expected the, the leader ability here, but it's totally fine. He uses the second disgusting looking carrot thing. <laughs> oh, he doesn't. I thought he did to get rid of my Ekimara. What does he do? Uh, yeah, that's not that great of a play. I guess he was just trying to pull it out. Maybe, I don't know. Like, I don't want to be a dick, but maybe he wasn't playing this deck to the best of its ability. Although, I like, I, I shut it down so effectively early. It was hard for him to uh, ever really get anything done. So I revive my armor smith. I get the, the armor down on those two units. It doesn't really matter particularly which one, and this is the perfect time to pass. <laughs> and then he just force fits because yeah i was basically just won the game by the point so that's pretty much it uh the number one thing of, is fairly obvious but it is nice to see examples of it and also kind of a bit of a deck spotlight with the brand discard if you can get rid of their far seers you pretty much just won the game and you have to make sure to uh draw out 
you can also think of farts here as almost like a gold weather. It's something that you're is constantly going to be hemorrhaging your points, uh, your strength advantage. So if you can pass on them while they're still in their infancy, while they're still within like eight to twelve points, then that's almost like it's kind of like in a similar like strategy mindset of clearing a gold weather by passing the round because you you shut that card down, you don't let it to get too big. Now, it's pretty lucky to have a Quarrel, which uh, eliminated uh, eliminated it immediately. Not every deck has cards like that. Uh, so basically, then you just kind of look at look at it as if it's a Gold Weather, something that you just pass on uh, whenever you have a good opportunity to do so without, you know, giving up the round too easily or whatever. And then uh, the, also the second part of their deck is the... Can't remember the name off the top of my head. The two strength ones that grow up to, you know, 14 strength or whatever crazy number like that. If you're able to make them overplay that in round two, that's really good. But it can be a little bit risky because the whole that whole situation can be really touch and go because it's like one big hammer. But if they can manage to not play that at the unopportune opportunities <laughs> unopportune opportunities then they'll just go into round two and conquer you over the head with those massive strength advantages so it helps to be able to win round one and then control round two but in doing so you need to be able to control farseer so it's like if you can't control farseers then maybe you can't control the other guys if you can't control the other guys you can control farseers it's all a very tricky situation but uh keep in mind the gold weather tactic and keep in mind to be able to try and control the round two to get them to overplay those which i believe is the two most effective ways to deal with that deck if possible. Thanks for watching.